Well, thank you, Alan, for that kind introduction. I hope you will forgive me for not standing, but um, I, I think I ought to explain. On the 30th of January, I was leaving the European Chamber Parliament in Brussels, and some swine pushed me from the back, and I had a really bad fall and sort of hit a step sideways, and uh, I'm subsequently diagnosed with a, a prolapsed disc. So. Um, it, I'll get better, don't worry, but uh, if you'll just bear with me, I really can't stand. <laughs> so, let's go ahead then. Well, my week started last Sunday morning. I got a call on Saturday night from LBC. Can you do an interview uh, Sunday morning uh, with Lord Adonis? Yes, of course. So, Julie, Sunday morning... I get plugged into Andrew Castle, uh, quite a nice guy, pleasant enough. So he says, what's your best thought for the week ahead for Brexit? Can the Prime Minister get a deal? What about her deal? Should we be backing this deal? Oh, no, of course we shouldn't be backing the deal. It's not a deal. A deal presupposes you've got something good and it's a win-win situation for both parties. This Prime Minister has been incapable of achieving a deal. She's not a deal maker. You know, we've heard it so many times. Is it, I'm leaving, we're leaving on the 29th of March. Well, of course, subsequently, you have viewed the shenanigans during the week and you'll have witnessed a lot of it. So... Lord Adonis said, well, I don't understand why you take that view. Why don't you want this deal? But really, we'd like a general election, because of course the Labour Party would like a general election. We'd like a second vote. I said, well, that's because you don't accept the first vote. But if you don't accept the first vote, you're destroying democracy. What makes you think people would want to vote again? We were given a vote. You have to respect the vote. We fought like hell for this vote. We were David and Goliath because we didn't have the money to do the things that, of course, the government could do and the Remainers. So we were always going to be disadvantaged. And, of course, we won. But we're faced with a parliament that is a parliament of Remainers, and we have a prime minister who is a Remainer. So we've had a hell of a time. We're sick to death of the MPs that stood on a manifesto, completely lied, but, of course, they lied. We didn't expect this. We actually expected them to be honourable and to do the right thing. But no, they didn't do the right thing. So this is a bad deal. We should leave on the 29th on WTO terms because we can. We're quite capable of trading with the rest of the world. Huge deals out there for us to do. So this is a no-brainer. So we don't think this is right, and we stand for the British people that actually 17.4 million people voted to leave. So that's what we want to do. Well, of course, it's become a situation where you see the EU will do everything to facilitate Mrs May. I don't know what they're going to come up with. They're going to probably say, well, you can probably stay till the last I heard this evening. It was the 22nd of May, because the Euro elections are on the 23rd. Um, and I don't know whether that will really, really, they'll manage it. Or she'll come back with some, I don't know, sort of hidden deal, and she'll try and present it to the House of Commons. Uh, and those guys will then try and probably come to some compromise. But there is no compromise. The simplest thing for us to do is leave. By leaving, we don't have to pay the $39 billion. We, of course, have to pay our dues, naturally. We would honour that, for sure but we don't have to be tied into four years of negotiations because this isn't a deal. This is tying us in a holding pattern, which says, oh, you haven't been able to do anything for three or four years. Oh, wait a minute. There's a next general election coming along. I tell you what, maybe it's better you people vote for the next general election. And I tell you what, we'd have a little box on there. Do you want to remain in the EU or do you want to leave? So we don't trust them. You can't trust the politicians. They have been duplicitous. They have not told us the truth. And unfortunately, this prime minister, sadly, sadly, is the worst prime minister that I could possibly... I've never seen a prime minister behave uh, the way this prime minister has behaved. Yeah. So she's capitulated, for sure. 
She didn't do anything. She took her civil servant, Ollie Robbins, with her. She sacked two Brexit secretaries, who were probably very capable of doing the job, but never got a chance to do the job. So if you have a civil servant who is a Remainer, and Mr. Robbins is a Remainer, he has a, a pedigree and a history of being very pro the European Union, and our civil servants, by and large, are definitely pro remaining in the European Union. You know, for 40 years, it's been very comfortable for them. They're totally integrated. They are friendlier with the civil servants in Brussels. I mean, you see it. You can't help but see it. So they're at one. There is no, no gulf there at all between them. So they've got comfortable. They're lazy. <laughs> the governments have forgotten how to govern. This is what we're left with in our political system. Parliamentarians that are happy to just rubber stamp what comes from Brussels. And believe me, it does come from Brussels. You know that. So we've got a politicized, I believe, civil service, which is quite frankly shameful, and it needs a good clear out. You know, these guys are on huge salaries, and blimey, you know, they're, <laughs> what are they doing? They're advising, they're, they're too powerful. It's not at all fair or right. Now, she could have taken some businessmen, she could have taken some reasonable people with skills to be able to negotiate a deal. There are plenty about. There are no shortages. But she kept everything very much close to her chest. And as I say, to lose two Brexit secretaries is absolutely appalling. So she wouldn't let them in. She wouldn't get involved with them under any circumstances. So this is the position we find ourselves in. A prime minister we can't trust. A political system which is inadequate and unfit for purpose. We're desperate to get people into to Westminster. You know we've struggled for years, but the system is so harsh against smaller parties. Look at the votes we got, you know, during the last election. And then you look at the SNP and you think they got a fraction of our votes. You know, 28 MPs. It's, it's an anathema. It's wrong. It's morally wrong. We are at a crossroads, I believe, in politics today where... Things have to change. It's intolerable that it remains the same. And we're reasonable people in this country. We don't, we don't expect miracles, we expect fairness. We expect people to have decent jobs. We expect people to have decent housing. We expect a decent NHS. We expect good schools. We're fair people. We're welcoming of people coming into our country. Of course we are. We need to control our immigration. Because, of course, the huge volume of immigration has indeed affected our housing, affected our schools, affected our NHS, and in some instances very much affected our jobs. And it's heartbreaking when you see people that have lost their jobs through no fault of their own, through large companies and corporations, you know, maybe charging the minimum wage because it was easy to have cheap, unskilled labour from the European Union. And that's not taking anything away from decent people that came in from the European Union. Work hard, pay their taxes, fine. Decent law-abiding people that do the right thing, no problem with that. But you do have to have control. You have to have control of the system. So that's where we've come from. We will be in a different place. I don't know where we'll be, but I hope with my, all my heart there will be changes in politics that make us count for the hard work, for the honesty and decency that this, this country deserves. And by God, it does deserve it. Now, I'm just going to go on to uh, another quick subject, county council. Well, you've got um, Councillor Alan Graves, um, a great guy. He's done a tremendous job in Derby, um, really worked hard. It's a tremendous incentive to see somebody go out there and do the job, do what it says on the tin. And that's what people want. Proper representation, know your area, know what people need, get stuck in there and do the very best you can. It's called representing the community. And that goes for members of parliament too. Now, Northamptonshire, we are smited in this county because we can't have our elections, because the county council, run by the Tories, have screwed up financially, which is an absolute disgrace. 
I cannot believe such incompetence has just been allowed to happen. What have they been doing? They are responsible for the money in this county. You know, we, we know we've driven through enough potholes tonight, for goodness sake, and you guys will be up and down it all the time, as I am in my part of North Ants. So we deserve better, but you won't have your elections here, but we will have the elections elsewhere, certainly within the East Midlands and around the country. So we're desperate to get people with their names on the ballot paper. People say, well, I, I couldn't vote for UKIP because I didn't have a name. So it's so important that people step up and do that. It's very important. Now, I just want to say something about um, a couple of issues which I, I cover. I cover uh, women's equality in the European Parliament and for um, UKIP. And it's, it's basically, it's gender equality, it's fair pay, it's all the things that you want really in society. Women have got to be treated fairly and sensibly. The other thing is, I would like to mention very much, is um, I've worked with a very nice guy, and I'm sure Alan may mention the same, uh, a guy called Wilson Chowdhury, who's the British Christian Pakistani Association in London. And we fought very hard to try and make sure that a very kind, lovely lady called Azia Bibi, who spent eight years in solitary confinement in Pakistan, was subsequently uh, released from her horrible burden of solitary confinement and cleared by three high court judges. She then had to go through a second court hearing and she is still under house arrest somewhere in Pakistan. Some of her family escaped. I thought, I thought our prime minister, I thought this country, being a Christian country, would have offered her safe sanctuary. I think even the Queen thinks that anymore, doesn't she? So I'm sh ashamed, because what I heard was it would be too difficult. They couldn't necessarily, uh, you know, secure her safety. Really, really, I, I'm, I'm appalled to hear that. I find that quite disgraceful. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that. So we cover the FGM situation. We had a, a court case, which was a start. But of course, this goes on. It's a horrific thing. It's child abuse, um, child marriages. All of these things are quite horrible. They do not help people integrate in society. It's wrong. It's cruel. And it needs to stop. And we do our very best to make sure people hear what we have to say about this, because we're not wrong. We know we're not wrong. I'm going to leave that and just finish with um, a few words about if we have to stand for the upcoming European elections. I hope we don't. We voted to leave. We want to see that honoured. But if, if by some awful, awful uh, exchange of things that happen in the next, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 days, we have to fight that. We have to be ready. And we have to have the people to go back there that are capable of bringing the, if you like, the, un, the truths or the untruths that they don't ever want us to know. I believe we've done that well in UKIP. I believe we've always come back and told the British people the things that are happening in the European Union that are quite frightening. And we've been proven right. And it's no pleasure to be proven right, let me tell you. Uh, I'm horrified with what is going on there. It is a federalist, socialist project. It will always cost a huge amount of money, and there is no democracy, none at all. It wouldn't matter how you voted. If they wanted to change it, they would, they could, and they do. And they want to close down free speech. They want centralised taxation. Uh, it's, it's horrendous. Now, they're zealots. They believe in what they believe in. But we want freedom and democracy. That's what we voted for. We believe in it passionately. And we must absolutely do our very best to see that we get that delivered. Now, we're not in government, and we make as much noise as we can, but we need your support because we cannot do the things we want to do without ground support. And that means you guys, the people that are in this party, are willing to support what we stand for. Right, I think I've waffled enough, so I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me, and I'm going to pass this on to the next speaker, which Alan will introduce. So thank you. Right. <laughs> okay.